Walking in, and they're off for the Grade 1 Labrooks King George, and they race over three miles and 18 fences. Throwed on to the outside towards the inner is Ahoy Senor, and between those two is Lompresse with Royal Pigai out wide together with Brave Man's Game as they rise at fence number one. The back marker was Envoy Allen as they go quickly on towards fence number two, and it's Frodon who will have the lead. Throwed on over the open ditch to Ahoy Senor on the inside. A slight mistake by the grey Eldorado Allen in midfield. They're all safely over fence number two. Miller's Bank has now been relegated to be last. So they're on the turn which takes them towards the back straight and Frodon has the lead. Racing keenly as Ahoy Senor to the inside rail in second. For company, he has Lompresse in a very close third with Brave Man's Game around the outside. He's been followed next by Royal Pagai on the inside, Eldorado Allen, and then Hitman with on the inside, Envoy Allen, and the back marker is Miller's Bank as they rise at fence number three, and Frodon has the lead, and a clear lead there of a couple of lengths as they went over that fence. Royal Pagai was not that fluent. Going on now towards another plain one, which will be fence number four, and Frodon and Briny Frost have got the lead, and they were spring-heeled over that fence. They all jumped it well. Lompresse moving up on the outside of Ahoy Senor in second and third. Then the orange of Brave Man's Game out quite wide on the course as they now go towards the first of the open ditches. Frodon really reached for that towards the rear of the field. Envoy Allen wasn't too fluent, and he's now been relegated to last once more. On now towards the next, which is the six. Frodon led to Lompresse on the outside of Ahoy Senor. And they're then being followed by Royal Pagai, and out wide is Brave Man's Game as they go into the turn. Next is Hitman with Eldorado Allen the Grey up against the inside rail. Miller's Bank is out wide, and still the back marker is Envoy Allen as they make the turn inside the final two miles of the Labrooks King George, and it's Frodon, on the 2020 winner, who's out in front to Lompresse, who is in second. Ahoy Senor on the inside, just third. Out a little bit wider, Brave Man's Game in fourth. Between those two is Royal. Royal Pagai, and then Eldorado Allen towards the inside with Hitman, who's got the white noseband. Out wide is Miller's Bank, and still the back marker is Amboa Allen. They go on now towards fence number eight, the middle one in the home straight, and Frodon still leads. Frodon jumped it well all safely over as they come up towards halfway. They'll pass the stands after the next fence, which will be fence number nine of the Labrooks King George, and Frodon still leads the Christmas parade. It is Frodon who is out in front. Ahoy Senor jumped it in second. Royal Pagai is in third with stable mate on the outside. Lompresse racing in fourth. In fifth is Brave Man's Game, followed by Eldorado Allen, who's on the inside of Hitman, and then Miller's Bank, and then Envoy Allen, who's last of the nine, and at the moment racing about seven lengths off the leader who continues to be throwed on it was a hoist and you're on the inside who was just ridden around that turn by Derek Fox he's back on the bit once more now so through the starting point and through halfway, going now towards fences 10 and 11 on the side of the course. And Frodon leads the way to Lompresse on his outside. Then very wide, Brave Man's Game with Ahoy Senor and also Royal Pegai as they went over the next. Eldorado, Allen and Hitman followed by Miller's Bank and still waiter with at the back of the field is Envoy Allen. They go now towards another ditch, Frodon by about three parts of a length and a bad mistake by Hitman. Hitman blundered badly at the ditch, Fence number 11, he's now been relegated to almost last. They go into the back straight, going inside the final mile, and Frodon still leads to Lompresse towards his outside in second. Still a wide trip for Brave Man's Game. Up against the inside rail, Ahoy Senor with Royal Pagai racing between rivals. The next wave, Hitman trying to recover from that blunder with on the outside Miller's Bank. On the inside and now being driven along is Eldorado Allen and the back marker Envoy Allen as they go now over the first one, taken down the back straight. Lompresse slightly out to his left over that, but it's still Frodon who leads the way to Lompresse in second. Brave Man's Game getting a little closer now in third position. Over the next one down the back, Lompresse reaches for it, and again he jumps out left-handed. Going now on towards the final open ditch, Frodon still leads. Lompresse in second. Brave Man's Game, and then Ahoy Senor who races towards the inside as they go over that open ditch, and it was Frodon who led them 
them over it. And now they're beginning to get strung out in behind him as they go towards the final fence taken down the back straight. Bryony Frost and Frodon. Long press to within a neck over in second. Brave Man's Game a length and a half away in third. Ahoy Senor in fourth. Royal Pigai is driven in fifth. Three lengths away. Eldorado Allen is now in sixth. Then Hitman in seventh. In eighth place is Miller's Bank. And Envoi Allen is still last and laboring at the back of the field as the field for the Labrooks King George make the turn for home. Frodon digging in towards the inside. Long pressing on the outside and wider still is Brave Man's Game. A break of four lengths back to Royal Pagai up against the inside rail. Long Presse led as they took the third from home. Brave Man's Game has now moved into second and looks a big and persistent danger. Then Frodon and then Royal Pagai. Two out in the King George. Long Presse over on the far side. On the near side, Brave Man's Game. They've now gone eight lengths clear of the rest. A private duel between Brave Man's Game and Long Presse. And Brave Man's Game begins to win the duel as he jumps the 18th of final fence. Down in second is Long Presse, who blunders and unseated his rider. And it is Brave Man's Game to give Paul Nichols a record 13th win in the King George. Brave Man's Game has won the King George. Royal Pig Eye was second, Frodon was third, and in fourth was Eldorado Allen. Brave Man's Game gives Paul Nichols his third. Harry Cobden's alongside me. Take me through the King George. Oh, obviously, um, he travelled really well and jumped brilliantly. I was just getting taken a little bit left by Lahom Presse all the way around. But did you think about dropping in on in his other side? I did, I did. But I just thought we would just go down the middle. It's a big wide fence, isn't it? If I had to go a little bit wider than I do, I just didn't want to interrupt things and. I also needed him to give us a lead into the straight because yeah. I didn't think Broden was good, quite good enough to take us down to the second last, and he was, so that was why I just sort of stuck it out and followed him. Rather than ask you about Cheltenham, I'm going to ask you about this track. I mean, does this play to his strengths? Does he feel very much at home here? Yeah, he's obviously very good here, isn't he? But, um, you know, he looks more and more like a stayer every time he runs now, doesn't he? Mm. I was off the bridle turning in, and as soon as he got up size long presse, I just... Didn't ease up on him, but I wasn't so as aggressive as I was. And um, he's pinged the second last and thought, right, let's go and win our race. And he's exactly done. He's done that, hasn't he? Great stuff. What up? Cheers. Cheers. 13 King Georges for the man to my right, Paul Nichols. Well done. What's your react? Oh, delighted, obviously. Uh, been a lot of pressure getting him right. You know, you've been reading a lot of stuff that makes you think, oh, what are we doing there, you know? And um, didn't stay, wouldn't go in the ground and all the different sorts. But we knew we had him right and I knew he was a decent horse. He's proved it today, you know. I think that'll turn out to be very good form. Long Presse hadn't have unseated at the last. He'd have been second. I think that's probably good form. Well, was it a, a plan as the race developed to, to, to have your horse a little bit wide? He, he does like a bit of room, as you saw when we rode him at Weatherby last time. A little bit of room suits him. And we made an error at Aintree last year, going round the inn on him, and he liked that bit of space. But the only trouble, Long Presse was jumping across us all the way. And in a race like that, you can't sort of take a pull and drop him behind and lose two lengths. So we had to put up with that. It doesn't matter, you know, he's a big horse and he needs a bit of room. But when he loomed up turning in, I thought we got a great chance here, and he galloped all the way to the line. How confident were you coming back here to the to the seat of that Corto Star Six? I thought he was as well as we could possibly get him. I, today was going to be. You know, if we didn't win today, we wasn't good enough. Simple as that. We had no excuses in his prep. Quite, we were all quietly confident in what his work and the way he'd run around here and his win at Weatherby, you know, probably being not that fit really was good. Okay. Pulled out on the day at Cheltenham last year. How do you feel about heading back there? Well, he'll run probably in the Gold Cup. Well, he will. He won't run before, and God willing. Um, he, he won't, you don't think he will run before? Then? No, no, no. no. Okay. He doesn't need a prep run. He's brilliant fresh. So we'll give him a nice month quiet and then build him up rather than last year we went. And, and I just wouldn't want to run on very, very testing ground, possibly. Cheltenham three and a quarter on testing ground is different. Often on the Friday, Gold Cup, you've got nice ground. You, it's a lap of the gods, but if it's nice ground, that would suit him well. I wouldn't be too worried. But you know this... But he's this... getting stronger now. That's the key to him. He's getting stronger, more mature. But you know this 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 race course and this race so well, yeah. and people talk about how, you know, this is a sharper yeah. test compared to your 3-2 around yeah. Cheltenham, but you've got to stay to win this. You race. have to stay, and he stayed on very strongly because they go a good gallop here. There's no hiding place. You don't get a breather. Cheltenham sometimes suits always like him on decent air because he's got enough boot that you can travel up and down those hills and keep taking a pull different in a slog but on decent ground that happens round here you yeah, end to end gallop and I was pleased to see him really stay on strong yeah. up the straight you know the other horse looked beat when he unseated at the last um, and they'd had a good scrap over the last three so I thrilled with him and you must be out with Frodo 
Oh, what a fantastic horse, you know. He jumped brilliant, travelled, showed enthusiasm. I've got a, my job now to find a race that he can win. Ought to go for something like the Portman Cup at Taunton at the end of the month <laughs> yeah. where he gets no weight and bowled on round there. But he's a fantastic horse. He loves it. You know, he was out that gate jumping. He's a grand horse. He just quite hasn't got the legs of the younger horses now. OK, and you avoided Cheltenham with him last year. Will you do the same? A Frodon. I, I, I haven't really made a plan for him this year yet. A horse like that, you just got to see what the ground is. I mean, if the ground was good at the end of the month, I wouldn't be worried about looking at the Cotswold chase. If it was like last year, but we'll see. If it was soft, there'd be no point. Could protect a cat and win that. But if it's good ground, it'd be worth a go. OK, and Hitman, we, we still don't know about the trip, do we? How is he? Oh, well, he got the trip well there, didn't he? We were just saying, if you've got to stay to win round here, so there's no doubt about his stamina now. He's won a Charlie Hall. You know, I'm not worried about the trip now. I just would, I wouldn't want to go to Cheltenham on attritional ground. That's just because I think he does like nice ground. So, so do you feel that that, st that staying at three miles plus is him now? Or? Oh, yeah, he'd no point going back in trip. Okay. You, you know, he's better off in those type of races, isn't he? Definitely. I Great. Mean, he's, you know, go to Cheltenham and swing, but I'd like to think we're back here in 12 months' time. Great stuff, well done. Thank you very much. Cheers, Paul.